We started this segment to separate the fa the facts from the fear that are out that is out there, and we are continuing that endeavor. But instead of just focusing on coronavirus and COVID-19, we're expanding it to more of a case at Q&A. And our guest today kind of exemplifies that because we asked Sheriff Javier Salazar to join us last week to talk about COVID-19 in the jail. But in light of what's happened over the weekend, I, I think we really need to talk about the protests that turned ugly and and you actually took part in a protest today. Why was that yeah. important, do you think, to do? Well, look, at, at the end of it all, uh, these folks just really want to know that we're listening as public officials that we're listening. I said, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm listening to you. Uh, I, heck, I agree with with what you're saying. I mean, we and, and as first responders are just as outraged as the rest of the country is at, at what happened. Uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, George Floyd was murdered, and and that is an outrage. Uh, you know, even more outrageous is the fact that other officers stood by and did nothing. And so, you know, that's something that that we're working very very hard to ensure that our officers uh, are doing the right thing, but also that they're that they're calling other people out when they see injustices being done. Uh, and so, yeah, absolutely, I, I I saw eye eye with what they were saying today, and and of course, I saw fit to to march with them. Sheriff, you, you mentioned that outrage and that you're hoping that officers and officers of the law know how to do the right thing. I know that you are using the killing of George Floyd as a training tool. We, we, we did a report on that recently. Tell us about that. What exactly are you telling your officers? Well, your so, so last year, last year we undertook a, a, a training philosophy. Well, more of a more of an overall agency philosophy. Uh, based on the concept of EPIC, ethical policing is courageous. It's something that the New Orleans Police Department started. And in, in, in a nutshell, what it does, there's got a lot, of, it's got a lot of facets to it. But in a nutshell, what it does is it encourages deputies in our case to speak up. If you see an officer or a fellow deputy stepping out of line administratively or even criminally, uh, say something, do something. Don't just stand there and let it happen. Uh, think about, and, and I use this as a, as a teachable moment for a cadet class the other day. Think about if one of those officers uh, in, in Minneapolis could go back in time right now, if they were able to magically go back in time and have said something to the to that officer that that was on uh, on George Floyd's neck, uh, all of this would have been avoided. I'll bet you any other one of those guys would if they're smart, would pay millions of dollars right now for the ability to go back in time and, and say something. And, and so what I'm telling my cadets is that each and every one of you has the ability to avoid you know, mass protests and mass rioting and, and officers and civilians getting hurt and even killed uh, just by speaking up and saying something and avoiding it from becoming a problem. Talk about Saturday. I mean, it, it, and, and kind of how it played out for you and the Bear County sure. Sheriff's Department. I mean, five o'clock, there's a peaceful protest. They walk from Travis Park. They the protesters walk in front of the police station, walk back to Travis Park. And then I think a lot of protesters thought it was over at that point. But then something reignited down by the Alamo and that turned ugly. How how Absolutely. how did you see it? Oh, that, that, exactly that. Uh, you know, we early in the evening, we'd been we had had our attention split. We were keeping an eye on something in one of the one of the uh, uh, smaller municipalities that had that had some activity going on and they were asking us to help monitor but we also had an eye on downtown san antonio and so when the when the suburb uh event ended we moved all of our assets downtown and we were just waiting uh i was actually eyes on 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 one of the demonstrations that was going on at police headquarters and you're right uh they they moved on they it was pretty clear that they were they were winding it down the, the peaceful part of it and then we saw a group that splintered off and went to the Alamo. Uh, and it seemed like parts of that group, not all of them, parts of that group seemed to be trying to instigate uh, an issue of some sort between the group that was protesting something totally different at the Alamo. Uh, and we just seem, okay, somebody seems to be itching for a fight here. And we knew when it gets dark is when it's gonna get really, really interesting. And sure enough, when it got dark a little while longer, uh, things started to, to take a turn for the ugly. And so we were able to monitor the situation. We were keeping an eye on our courthouse because we saw we had seen where some some courthouses had been actually burned. And so we we're keeping an eye on our courthouse. But then when we heard officers kind of getting overrun uh, around River Center Mall, uh, we, we we couldn't we couldn't deal with that. So we we went we made sure uh, I went to the courthouse and I got our deputies and, and we led the we led the charge into into downtown. 
and we were able to get in there and help out with SAPD. I mean, SAPD had plenty of people on the ground. DPS had a whole bunch of troopers here on the ground, but but we weren't as big of a force as they were, but we felt we could be of some assistance. Welcome back. We are wanting to continue our discussion <clears throat> with Sheriff uh, Bear County Sheriff uh, Javier Salazar regarding the protests and rioting that our city and community saw over the weekend. Sheriff Salazar, I want to ask you a little bit about the perpetrators. So much of the discussion has now moved to focus on these perpetrators. What do we know about them and do we have a handle yet on who exactly they are? I don't I don't have a whole lot of information on that, Isis. Uh, I, I know that there were there were relatively few uh, I know that that uh, you know law enforcement has taken some criticism for not making a whole lot more arrests, but you know in a situation like that, I, I I believe that that had we started to arrest people, a it would have distracted officers uh, from the bigger picture, it would have tied up officers, and uh, it would have initiated physical confrontations over what is in essence a, a property crime, uh, and at that point we were just trying to keep to get people out of downtown. I mean. Uh, it was a very ugly picture. Smoke was in the air. Uh, officers, deputies, and troopers were being pelted with rocks from above, from parking garages, uh, hit, being hit with bottles and, and bricks. Uh, we just needed to get those folks out of there as quickly as possible. What's your message to the community tonight? I mean, it, people that, I mean, obviously, nobody thinks it's right that somebody should be killed on a street in America today right. by police right. officers. No, what's absolutely. Your, what's your, and, and what's your message to the community, people that are worried about the violence, people that are worried about the injustice? Well, well I think people, a lot of people are assuming that, uh, that, that it's us against them. We agree. Uh, we absolutely agree. We're on the same page here. Uh, we believe that what I believe that what happened with George Floyd was was murder, nothing short of murder. There's no way to sugarcoat that. And there's no way to sugarcoat what those other officers did. Now, maybe their training doesn't doesn't incorporate uh, the fact that you should speak up and say something when, when you see an injustice being done, but ours does. And, and we're going to make sure that our officers here at the sheriff's office uh, know that, that it's not just socially acceptable that you should say something. It's expected of you. And you're going to be held accountable if you allow something like that to happen and get out of hand. Sheriff Javier Salazar, we appreciate your time so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. And of course, he'll join us tonight during the night beat around 10 30. So we'll see you then, Sheriff. Thank you. We'll be right back.